Books are like food. Okay. Somebody likes a pizza, somebody likes uh, rice, somebody likes uh, samosa, you know. So it's just like that. It's it depends on your taste. It's not what is good for one is not good for the other. So you know you will have to do. You have to find out what your tastes are. So the 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 best way to do this is that if your syllabus describes a book, uh, look at it. Look at whether it gives enough motivation. Gives examples. Gives enough explanations. And whenever it is lacking in any of these things. Try to look at other books. Okay. Now these other books nowadays, uh, you, you, uh, you can you can just go to uh, the web and search. You will see a huge list of books. Okay. What you should do is that you should look at the contents, the table of contents of the of, the, of those books, and see at what level uh, you should look at the sections, the chapter names and the sections. Then you will be able to relate it to topics in your syllabus. And then you obviously you try to choose the book that is best for you. I mean, <coughs> the book that is best for you is something that uh, deals at length uh, in, in the topics. If it's an advanced book and you are in a basic course, then this might fo form only probably the first chapter of the whole book. That's not good for you. Okay, so this, you have to decide what is the level of the book. All right, your teacher uh, can help you with this. Okay, and of course you can make this analysis yourself. And the other thing is that, so you have to choose a book which deals with most of the things in your syllabus and which is, uh, don't be scared of a bigger book because I'll tell you what, a bigger book, when it's bigger, it's easier to read because it explains things. It's like, think of a bigger book as a person continuously talking to you, okay? Obviously, there's more stuff to say, therefore the book is big. Right? You don't have to be scared about it, okay? You can really, the more bigger the book uh, and the more basic it is, you can read it like an hour, literally. Can be a little careless because the person who says it will say important things several times so that it gets into your head. Okay. And look at a book at your level. And the other thing is also to try, if you're reading a particular topic, look at the same topic in several books. It may happen that different topics are dealt with better in different books. So you, you may not be able to follow only one book. Okay. But of course, you cannot follow too many also. So you must keep a limit. Something like, I would say something like three books for each course. One is the one that is, you know, given in syllabus. The other two should be your choice. And these other two can also change depending on your topic. Okay, so you may, you, a particular topic may be very well done in a certain book. And, uh, and how do you ascertain that you read the topic in that book, then you see that there's more motivation, there are more examples, the proofs are more well written, or they're more natural. And the pace at which the author is writing things is, is kind of, Okay, with you. okay. So these are all things that you will have to decide on your own. So this involves a little bit of reading on your own, but you can do it. You can do this for every course. Okay. And now we have a lot of resources. Most of the books are available electronically on the web. Okay. So and apart from that, there are there are a lot of other uh, you know resources like videos and things like that. So you should make use of that. Okay. And uh, uh, you should also be uh, and if you if you uh, if you find a book that is very technical, okay, then uh, you can avoid it. Okay. But be, sure, be assured that now there are so many books in every area, people are writing at different levels. There are lots of books in every area and then you know, uh, uh, it may, uh, it, therefore it should not be difficult for you to find a book that is okay for your level. Okay. There is a book at every level, it's always there. In fact, many books at every level. And uh, then you must also uh, not be affected by the, 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 the wrong belief that you know only if you read from a certain book you will get marks and you will pass and things like that. Preparing uh, for the exam is a completely different thing. See the, the examination has a certain pattern, it has a certain type of question set. You have to prepare for that and you have to get your marks. Cracking an exam is a completely different thing. But this should not come in your in the way of really learning knowledge and the true course of knowledge and appreciating the subject. Okay? That is something that you have to parallel. Okay? Neither can be substituted for the other. Because if you just know how to crack the exam and come out uh, with, with flying colors but you still don't appreciate the beauty of the subject, then it's you feel as far as the subject is concerned. On the other hand, there's no point in 
understanding subject very well and still doing very badly in exams. So you need to have a balance. But what will take you a long way is your attitude towards the subject, toward for having beautifully learned the subject. They learn the subject, appreciate the subject in all its beauty. And you know, there's a very simple way to test this. Just you should be able to talk about it extremely to anybody. Okay? Without opening a book. You must be able to find your own way to it. Then you have learned subject. Then it's like uh, if you know Delhi, you should know the streets of Delhi, you should know the landmarks. If you if you are uh, Put anywhere in Delhi, you should find your way. You know, it, it should be like that. So this this happens only if you really uh, uh, really know it. And you can't really know something unless you see the beauty in it. So this is what you have to do.